In September 2014, Helen and Thomas O'Driscoll arrived home to their house in Charleville in County Cork to every parent's worst nightmare. Their nine and a half year old twins, Patrick and Thomas, had been stabbed to death by her eldest son, Jonathan, in a devastating murder suicide. In the past 12 months, both Helen and Thomas have requested that their house should be demolished and a new house built. As part of our Time to Talk Mental Health Week, we travelled to Charleville in County Cork to speak to Helen as she remembers her three sons. Helen wants to see improvements within the mental health sector in Ireland. Tell me about Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan, God bless him. Jonathan was a lovely boy, very quiet. He loved his football, hurling now, and he used to do a bit of boxing as well, God bless him. Loved his computer games, it was his life. He was a very quiet, civil child. Never gave a back end, so no. Never smoke in front of you or drink in front of you. I suppose that was a moral of respect, I suppose. But he grew up to be one big teddy bear. Do you know, the 21 years he was in this world, I wouldn't change one of them for the world, daughter. It was the best 21 years of my life, God speed him. And you had a great relationship with him. You were oh, very God. close. We were very close. I was closest to Jonathan because I'd known Chilla for years, you see, and we were trying, but it wasn't working out, you know, so we lost a little baby, didn't got speed him after waiting 14 years for him. That didn't like, they'd always ask you, Mommy, when are we getting a new baby? When are we getting a new baby? And my heart used to fall, telling him I don't know, so we'd have to ask Holy God, we'll ask Holy God. And then thanks for the Jesus years afterwards, then I got expecting with the twins. Tom, Tom and Patty. Tom, Tom, Patty got speed him, yeah. I went in and I had the twins in, God bless them and save them. My dad and my family came in. God, it was the happiest day of our life. Two lovely little boys, God bless them and save them. For me, it was like my whole world, the God opened up and said, here, you've done enough, take them. It was the excitement of the two children to know that they were the big sister and brother now and that they had two little baby brothers to look after. And God, it was, they were so small. I just see them trying to hold them and mind them when they were small. And they play with him, and she, she was like a mother then. She'd have him in the buggy and gone up the town and fleshed him off. And he was his bed. He'd take him out and play with him and the whole lot. When did you begin to realise that Jonathan was suffering with mental health problems? Uh, it would have been about a year and a half ago, or a little bit more, for the tell a lie. Um, he started to change a little bit, God bless him, and save him. He was still the lovable John now, God bless him, but... He started to change. He'd get a little bit of a mood swing now and again, and you know, he'd never ever raise his hand to hurt you or touch you or anything like this. But I realised it when he pushed me in the kitchen one day. And I said to him, What the name of God is coming over you by? Well, it was actually when I looked into his face, it was like he wasn't John that was standing there anymore looking at me. So I said to him, You need help, boy. I said to him, Like this. And his reply back to me was, Yeah, I do. So, um, because that wasn't his nature, you felt? No, it wasn't his nature, daughter. He was too lovable of a child, like. So I said to him, then John, I said, you need help. So I finally decided to go to get John help. And it was then, when he pushed me, I got a bear in order to, to let him know that he wasn't getting away with it, to be honest. I didn't realise how serious he was sick. Like, was, and he'd done it more or less to frighten him, to let him know that I wasn't taking this. Because he was a big strapping young boy, God bless him, when I was only a small woman. So... To be honest, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. He broke my heart for the week. He was only out a week, and I was one was crying, crying in a way over him. You put him out of the house for one week. Yeah, I lifted him. Teach him a lesson. Yeah, I lifted him down with my sister. Should they ruined him and they spoiled him more than I would. And God, as I said to him, then, "Mommy, I'm sorry," and all this, and I said, "I know that son," but I was trying to be stiff and hold out. But sure, I couldn't hold out. So I went away up home. He went to come up home, tell the girls bring you up. He come back up home and he'd be around the kitchen and be hugging you, and, you know. But it was from that that the judge decided, I asked the judge, that could she get help for John. So then, from what I can gather, they prescribed him medication. And he was taking it and resumed. It was doing him good at stages anyway. And did he seem to be improving? He was at times and then you'd know he'd go back again. You'd know you'd go in one day and then he'd be pure agitated again. You'd know he was the bad days and the good days, I used to call him at the finish. But... Um, you never think in your wildest dreams in this world that that lovely little boy that you reared for 21 years of his life because of having problems could just wipe out his whole family and destroy his whole family's life. And it wasn't him like 
it was the mental problem that done it then. But I really do genuinely from the bottom of my heart think that the law should be changed. I mean, if they're suffering with mental health, how are they supposed to remember, did I take my tablets this morning? I think I did. So they think they took them, but they didn't actually take them, do you know what I mean? Whereas, if I had to know John was on serious medication, well, I'd say, right, did you take your tablets this morning, son? Look, they're all there, take them now. I'd know if he took them, do you understand? So then you went to the inquest, and what did you find out at oh the God. inquest? I went to the inquest to find out this um, God speed him. He had no medication in his system for over a week. And this, he suffered with three problems, not one. I want to write to know he suffered with one very bad. I would never have left him killing my three lovely children that day, you know. So it's okay for them to say they can go home tonight to their four children or their three children, God bless them, whatever they have, and play with them. But at the end of the day, I'm the mother that lost three children, not two. I lost three of my lovely boys, all because of mental health. And I didn't know enough that I could have helped him more and I could have saved the rest of my children. Whereas they're gone to God now and I have nothing left, only memories and hatred and all of that. Because if some doctor had to pick up a phone and tell me that Jonathan was sicker than what he was, I was only home three days for my holidays when it happened. Well, I would have never left John Killick the children that day. I would have got him into a care. I would have brought him up to cock myself. And I would have demanded that he be more treated properly and more done for him.